Sutra 1.2. Let me share with you that this is one of the most important sutras in all of the Yoga Sutras. And this is Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirodaha. Again, what I'll do is I'll sing three times and I really encourage you to join me. Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirodaha Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirodaha Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirodaha A very common translation is that yoga is the cessations of the fluctuations of the mind. Yoga is the calming of the fluctuations of the mind field. And I'll share a couple more translations. Yoga is the ability to direct and focus mental activity. Yoga is the uniting of consciousness in the heart. The restraint of the modifications of the mind stuff is yoga. Or finally, Yoga is the resolution of the agitations of the mind. So, what kind of mind? So the vritti, the agitations, or all of this movement and fluctuation of the mind, one needs to step back and ask, you know, what kind of thoughts are these? Are they related to what? And what are we really talking about there? So a couple key things. At the time that all of this was written, this was predating modern day psychology. So there were no words like conscious mind and subconscious and, and all of that that we know of today. With that said, what Patanjali is really talking about is an attachment, which is a form of agitation, to the egoic thoughts of the mind, not just all blanket thoughts, but those thoughts that are related to the smallness of our ego. And the ego is often misunderstood in yogic philosophy. Some misunderstand that what our goal is to destroy the ego. That is not it whatsoever. We are never trying to destroy the ego. In fact, examples of, of where the egoic mind has been completely destroyed are the very sad situations of dementia or Alzheimer's, where someone has lost the knowing of who they are. And so that is not what yoga is trying to achieve whatsoever. The ego is not bad per se, but what we are attempting with this particular sutra, Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirodaha, is to let go of the attachments we have, especially the unhealthy or obsessive attachments we have to agitating and triggering ourselves constantly in this loop that's ever regenerating. Now the attachments to the egoic mind, now that is the problem. And that's what creates the disturbance. So if you think of your mind like a quiet lake when it's in Nirodaha, the surface of the water is calm peaceful. It doesn't mean that the water isn't moving because beneath the surface of the water, there's still a little bit of a gentle current. Always, always. If there was no movement in the water, we would call that a swamp. And that's an unhealthy ecosystem. In a healthy lake or river, there's current. But the top of the water is like a mirror. And so that is this idea of where we're going with Nirodaha. The thoughts are like the current. They're still there, but they're not like that super, super turbulent, right? That creates the agitations of the mind. Instead, it's just very gentle underneath the surface. And so that is the idea, because never will we actually be able to stop the thoughts happening in our brains that scientifically not possible. And again, nor do we want that. 
Um, but the second part of this is this experience of the chit and the chitta. We are the chitta, part of the chit. Chit is like the ocean of consciousness. And we borrow just a little bit of that, just a drop, as we are a spiritual being having a human experience. And we borrow that for the duration of this human experience. And then at the end, when this body is done to be retired, we give that drop back to the ocean of consciousness. We have come from the infinite and we will return to the infinite. So that second word, chitta, is so important to appreciate and understand that it means so much more. Um, and finally, let me share with you this example uh, that is one of the most powerful metaphors that I know that I teach so much about, and that's the example of the lotus flower. So the lotus flower, you may or may not know, grows in the murkiest, muddiest conditions. And yet when it rises up during the day, it grows through the mud and is pristine. You won't ever see like even a little speck of mud on the beautiful lotus flowers. And there's this gorgeous lotus flower temple dedicated to Lakshmi in Ubud, Bali, that I love to go to and just be with all the lotus blossoms and their energy. Because the lotus blossom is also a symbol of divine feminine. When it closes its petals and it submerges into the dark, that's the lunar nature. It's looking within, right? And then in the daytime, it bursts through the surface of the water, it blooms, and it rises up to the sun. And that's our experience of how we relate to the external world. And otherwise, it's that internal nature of how we relate to ourselves. So with yoga chitta vritti nirodaha, no matter what is happening, in, around us, around us in this moment in the world, or around us in our families of origin. But it can be very murky, it can be muddy, it can be supremely challenging. But that doesn't deny the fact that you and I can rise up, no matter the conditions, and rise up towards the light and expand. And so there's always this beautiful hopefulness in this sutra for me, just a remembrance of your own divine nature, your own divine beauty and grace, and all that is possible for you. If you're able to simply slow down the current so it's not so choppy, because if it's really choppy, then it's very difficult to have clarity and to make the best decisions. And yoga chitta vritti narodaha this is when we're in our highest self connected to source energy. And when that is happening, mm, only good comes. So from my heart to your heart, this is chapter one, verse two of the Yoga Sutras.